these guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So tonight we'll have a brief introductory remarks so you can learn a little more about each candidate. Uh, then we'll have a series of questions that you will determine. I have two right now, and I can go to the well for my questions, but if you have any questions about general issues, specific votes or issues, feel free to write them on a card like this. Some at the table, and Anna has some, she'll deliver around. And then when you write it down, uh, Anna in the head will, will pick it up and bring it up to me and we'll, we'll fire it off here. So, uh, the candidates are in alphabetical order, so we want to thank them for coming all over the state. Uh, down here we have Scotty Bowman, which is a great name for in, in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's on the hockey boat. <laughs> Scotty is from Detroit, and uh, they say politics is not rocket science. But if it was, he might have an edge. He is a professor who teaches physics. Uh, astronomy and math at Macomb and Wayne County Community Colleges. Uh, next to him, Mr. Gary Glenn is the uh, president of the American Family Association of Michigan and has been for quite some time and is also the chairman of the state chapter of Pearl Harbor Survivors. So, may not be here today if it wasn't for sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He's not a Pearl Harbor. <laughs> no. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll find out more about each gentleman um, when they talk about themselves. Mr. Randy Heckman here in the middle is from Grand Rapids. By the way, Gary's up from Midland, to Detroit, Midland. Uh, Randy is from Kent County, the Grand Rapids area, former prosecutor there and a probate county judge. True. 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 Now full-time candidate. Uh, to his left, uh, Mr. Peter Panecci from the from Roscommon, not Hope Lake, from Roscommon. Peter's a small businessman. He has a software company uh, that provides uh, software for attorneys, desktop business solutions. Thanks for coming over from Roscommon. And uh, Chuck Marino is here from Brighton, which is in Oakland County, right? No, Livingston County. Yeah. Livingston, okay. Don't we'll say Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> we have the lowest property tax. Uh, downstate, as we would say up here, though. But uh, thank you for coming up from Brighton. And Chuck is uh, owner of National Building Inspections, as it has some clients right in uh, this area. So those are our candidates. What we'll do is we'll start off. Uh, John Roth is our timekeeper. So we have three minutes each. And we'll start at uh, the end with Scotty. Our next round of questions, and we'll start with uh, Gary. The next round, we'll start with Peter, and so on. So we don't always have the same guy leading off there. So three minutes to uh, introduce yourself to our attendees tonight, uh, who you are, why you're running, what your background is, and why you think you'll be the best candidate to take on Debbie Stabenow. Thank you. Hello, I'm Scotty Bowman. I'm from Detroit. I am running for U.S. Senate. Because I believe our country is in trouble and we have a lot of big problems and government is not the answer, freedom is the answer. However, my mind is currently focused on one thing lately. <coughs> After the last candidate forum, I went home basically thinking to myself about all the differences between myself and um, these other gentlemen as well as who are not present. And I get home, I get on my computer, and I find out something so disturbing, I just realized that hopefully the differences between us are minor compared to one big difference between us and Debbie Stabenow. Um, Debbie Stabenow voted, was among the 88 senators who voted for de facto martial law a week ago Tuesday. It's S. 1867 was the bill. It was an appropriations bill, basically it helped support our military, but an amendment was added by Michigan's own Carl Levin, with the cooperation with, pardon to the party here, the Republican Party's own John McCain, and what the bill allows is for, it allows the President to send United States Armed Forces, not military police or even um, not U.S. Marshals, or FBI or something like that, send armed forces after people on American territory, including Americans, without any due process and lock them up indefinitely. Now, this bill started in the House 
But I think it has to go back to get clarified with the House. So there might be a chance to still stop it um, because they still have to agree now that it's been amended um, before it moves on. Um, the president, ironically, said that he objected to that part, but we'll, I'll believe it when I see him veto it. And there still were enough votes in the Senate to override a veto, so that's scary as well, just what's going on with these senators that so many of them care so little about our freedom. So I digress to one issue just because it's so pressing on my mind that I think it's bigger than simply talking about the qualification. One big qualification, I promise you I would never support anything of the sort, and I'm hoping everyone here can say the same thing. Scott is absolutely right, and the, the House version didn't have it, the Senate does, so they've got to go to conference committee, then it's got to pass both houses again, so it's not a done deal by any means. I'm Gary Glenn, my website is GaryGlenn.us, named after me so I can remember it easy enough, hope you will. Um, I uh, like to say that I was raised on Reagan and I'm hard to please. I married the state chairman of Youth for Reagan. We got married on March 4th. We didn't realize it at the time until afterwards that that's the same day Ron and Nancy got married. So we sent them an anniversary note and got one back on White House stationery. And sometimes I bring my real secret weapon when she's available, and that would be my 17-year-old daughter, Reagan Elizabeth Glenn. <laughs> she couldn't be with us here tonight. <laughs> Anybody who stands uh, before you and asks for your vote, I think has to be able to answer the first question, why are you running? I searched my heart. You know, I was in Washington about a month ago and had this very sober, and I'm in all seriousness, very sober uh, realization that if I win, I have to go there <laughs> and stay. I don't get to get on a plane and leave and go back to Midland, Michigan. And Washington and that snake pit of fights politically is not like living in Midland, Michigan or Traverse City. So why am I willing to risk winning and disrupting my family's life? Uh, as I search my heart, uh, let me answer it this way. Uh, and if I could have my son, Hunter James, stand up. Turn around and look at this young man. I want you to get, ask yourself how old he looks. Okay? Thank you, Hunter. Hunter James, he's named after his grandfather, James R. Glenn. Seventy years ago today, my father was four months younger than him when he stood in the street, and I've had the privilege of standing in the same street with him the last December he was alive, where he remembered shooting at Japanese airplanes. Found his best friend's grave, went out on the Arizona and took his picture with the commander of all Marines in the Pacific nine years ago today. He had a purple lay on, which meant all of the officers saluted him all day as a survivor. I tell you that simply to say that it was my father who not just by his words, but by the example of his own life, taught me to love my country. And I believe all that we have been taught to love about our country, our liberty, our free enterprise economy, our Judeo-Christian founding principles, our strength and security are all at imminent risk. If Barack Obama and Debbie Stabenow are re-elected and given another chance to finish implementing their agenda, they threaten to take away my children's birthright of freedom and turn our country into the United Socialist States of America. And we and our children might not ever get a free country back. I feel a sense of duty to do whatever I can to stop them. And in that sense, I suppose I'm standing here for the same reasons you're sitting there. You want to be able to have a free country to pass on to your children like we inherited from the greatest generation. With your support, that's the fight I'll take to the United States Senate. Thank you very much. I'd to say we do have a timekeeper here, and, and the yellow is going to be 30-second warning if you see it. Or maybe I might just step out like this. Why don't so. you put him right in front of you? <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, so far, good start. There you go. Good. Good. All right, next up, Randy Heckman. Thank, Thank you. Coming. Good evening. Good to be with you. And some of you we saw at the 912 group. And uh, good to be here. Thank you for being here tonight. Again, my name is Randy Heckman. And it's spelled H-E-K-M-A-N. There's not a C in it, but everyone wants to make that mistake. It's quite all right. From Grand Rapids. And uh, the question would be, you know, what, what is your background? It was already expressed. I'm a Navy veteran, uh, but uh, was a prosecutor in Kent County. We have some Navy veterans here. I can see your hands. Others? Other veterans here? Yes, thank you. Thanks for your service. Let's just thank you right now. And uh, 
returned to Grand Rapids, was a prosecutor, and at age 27 ran for a probate judge. And again, the thought is, can one person make, make a change? Again, I ran for probate judge, and juvenile court is part of that, because as a prosecutor, I went to the different courts in Kent County, and uh, I was just amazed to go to the juvenile division of probate court and see that actually, this is back in the 70s, they were paying kids who had broken the law. These were kids that would break into houses, and uh, instead of giving them any punishment, they weren't locked up, they weren't fined, they had no community service work, they uh, seldom were ordered to make restitution, but they were simply put back at home, and if they went to school the next day, they'd pay them. There was this notion that that's how we reform people. And I said, that's nuts. Little wonder that 54% uh, of the arrests in Kidd County in those, in those days were for kids 16 and under. And I tried to convince the court leaders and say, you really shouldn't do this. You ought to discipline, punish these kids. Otherwise, it sends the message to the community. I talked to the kids in the community. I said, it's a joke. They said, well, we know what we're doing. So I said, well, I'm just going to run that against an incumbent, one of the three judges. And again, I was a nobody from nowhere with my committee, by the way. My, my election team was my Bible study at our church. But I had this passion that said, I don't care about being a judge, but I do care about changing, getting more justice here. So one person can make it. I got 55% of the vote. And then I had to convince the other two judges who campaigned vigorously against me to change the, the tone at juvenile court. And over time, they did it. Let me just suggest to you that there are three things you need to look for in a candidate. One is, where do they stand on the issues? And I would suggest that knowing of the folks up here were pretty much within percentage points on the same page as far as where we stand on the issues. Two, who can beat Debbie Stebbins? If you're right on the issues, who has the ability to communicate well and beat her? But then three, who has the proven record of an ability to go there and not just talk, but get people to work together to make change? I, I have this little symbol that I go around with, a wrench. The Democrats have a hammer. Tax, spend, spend, tax, borrow. We need different tools. I like to go and fix things, and I encourage you to think about us, and I ask for your support. Thanks very much. Okay, next up, uh, Peter Konechi from Roscommon. <laughs> Roscommon. I was trying to get um, Ron to say Fulton late, by mistake, but um, he, did, he, he passed. So Pete Konechi from Roscommon. Um, it is Pearl Harbor, <laughs> and I, I just want to thank the greatest generation, as Ron said. I never talk about my family, but I just wanted to mention my family a little bit. My father happened to join the Navy just at the tail end of World War II. He was 17 at the time. He served um, throughout his life, and he actually retired as a captain in the Navy. He told us as young kids about his experiences on different destroyers or car carriers or minesweepers. He actually had the chance to teach ROTC at an inner city Detroit school for quite a while. Um, it was Murray Wright School in Detroit. And he had great stories about the kids that he helped. He actually took them to Annapolis and he got phone calls at all times of the night from these gentlemen talking about how successful they were and how grateful they were to him. So he's a, a great, great person. He's long been retired, but he lives in Texas now, but he goes down to Fort Hood every single Thursday. And he actually meets some people that are coming back from the Middle East and gives them cookies with my uh, mother. And then he actually sends um, kids off with cookies and perfection. So he's still there. I also have an uncle. Um, he was a few years younger than my father. He joined World War II also. He was actually a troop uh, transport pilot. So on beaches of Normandy, he was actually driving back and forth with troops and supplies. So um, he's a, a great, great hero too. I have two. I have three sons actually. Once in high school, but the two sons that are able to have served their country. They've uh, one's been through the National Guard. He's made his full commitment, and he's in San Francisco now doing some work. I have another one who just went through boot camp. He's young. He's 20 years old, and he's now um, going to college um, in the reserves. And as soon as he finishes college, he'll be fulfilling his commitment as an officer. So I'm very proud of him. Okay, why am I running? And I know that was a long-winded <coughs> but I'm very, very proud of my family. 
I'm running because I know that today we're facing another challenge just as uh, serious as Pearl Harbor. But this one's not from the Japanese or from the Germans, it's from you know, our own governmental establishment. Yeah. We have to look and we have to say, you know, what does the government do that's efficient? Can anyone think of a program? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, I've talked to a lot of people, a lot of different, yeah, they do that efficiently, but they're destroying our nation. And we have a decision. We have to go through and say, are we going to fight to restore our government, our government back to its constitutional duties? Or are we going to let it run wild like it is right now? It's running wild. So I'm running for Senate right now because I know that we have to restore government to its constitutional duties. I have to respectfully disagree with Randy. I think that there's very significant differences between our platforms. I'd like you to listen tonight um, to our words so that you can understand what the scriptures are. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, from Brighton, Michigan, Mr. Chuck Marino up next. Chuck, thank you. First of all, uh, I know you heard from Glenn, and Glenn told you that his father was a Marine. And we've gone to a number of these uh, meetings, and uh, about a week ago I realized something. I'm also raised by a Marine. And you can notice he's bald and I'm bald. I'm the Marine father. Get it out. I just kind of realized that. Anyways, um, as I said, uh, I, want, I want to say something before that. Um, because I am a Marine, there's something close to my heart that I want to start off with, and that is uh, uh, Toys for Tots is a big uh, Marine Corps uh, <coughs> charity. And on my website, we sponsor charities every month, and that's on my website starting the 15th. And I encourage all of you, if you could, if you could go get a toy and keep it unwrapped, and take it to one of the centers and drop it off, that would be great um, to help uh, people that don't have enough for Christmas. Anyways, I'm, I'm from Brighton, Michigan. Uh, we've had a place up here at uh, Beach Condominiums for a number of years. I'm familiar with this area. I have a um, subsidiary up here where they do um, what's called bank draw inspections. Uh, whenever banks are lending money, they send us our company in, or whenever somebody's buying a building, they send us in. Um, before this business that I, I owned for 10 years, I ran an international company, and the international company gave me a unique perspective, and that is it taught me about how other countries go about uh, business, taught me about how they pay taxes and how they take the tax money home and spend it home tax-free, um, unlike the United States. In the United States, if you don't know, if GM does any kind of a business overseas, to say in India, they sell cars, they got to pay taxes when they bring them back. And I'm for repatriating that money. Bring it back to the United States. If you want, you can give them an incentive to spend it on more people, uh, a bigger plant, or equipment, sure could get the economy going. I also ran a national company, a couple of national companies, and I had the rare opportunity to um, negotiate contracts against the Teamsters. I was pretty successful at that. I also wrote international electrical standards. I married uh, uh, NFPA, which is an American standard, to IEC standard, and made one uniform standard out of it. You, you don't think that's impossible to get all countries and all companies like GE and all those people together, you're sadly mistaken because I guarantee you, we fought for 13 years over a blue wire. And the blue wire, the United States called it as a hot wire, and Europe and everybody else calls it as a net neutral wire. So we fought over that for 13 years and finally we had already set aside what our preamble was in order to um, settle deals like this and it was to say what makes sense. What makes sense is a blue wire is like water. It's a neutral wire in the United States by the game. So I appreciate the time here. Thank you very much.